been starving for what felt like days, weeks, even months. I remember being out with Wario, who was once my rival, and Waluigi was Luigi's rival. But that was years ago. We had just wanted to find something to eat and had been stuck eating every plant around the psychotic world. I don't even know what we've become anymore. It's like the world sees us as the Mount Rushmore of the Nintendo world. But all I see is a bunch of desperate old decaying men walking on their last legs. We looked everywhere for food, but to no avail. Even with the four of us, there was nothing to be seen. We had spent the last few days together stomping on Goombas and Koopa Troopas, eating copious amounts of mushrooms and flowers, dodging piranha plants, driving on racetracks, and collecting stacks of cash along the way. But that was all useless when there was no supermarket or grocery store to purchase stuff from. Unfortunately, I fear it may all be coming to a premature end. None of us can remember how long we've been marching here. Jumping, stomping, eating, dodging. Always some new obstacle in our way, and ever more rolling hills to climb. It never ends, no matter how far we go. It's driving me mad, and I know it's getting to the others, too. I don't know how much longer we can keep going like this. We're all starting to starve. A man can only sustain himself on mushrooms alone for so long. But even as weak as we become, we can't stop. Nobody will say it, but we all know that if we stop, we're doomed. We must have been in here for years, like we entered some sort of trance or time slip. I don't know. I was never the smart one. That was Luigi. All I know is we've aged significantly over time since we got here. I guess this is the only way to defeat the unbeatable team of Mario and Luigi. But then, just as we were all on the brink of collapse, salvation seemed to appear on the horizon. A green tube, but this one was strange. There was smoke billowing out of it, like it was a chimney. The land beyond seemed equally as endless as the land before, and if this was the middle, there was no chance we could ever make it to the other side. But who would risk going down a tube that had to have fire somewhere at the bottom? Even if we were all desperate enough to do so, who would be the first to go? We had to decide. I don't know if this is a good idea. We should just keep going. How do you expect us to keep going? We can't make it another ten feet! I need to eat! Oh, me too. Ah, it smells good. It smells like... food! Wait, you fool! What if it is food? Would you jump straight into somebody's fire? Hmm, you're right. It could be dangerous. I don't care about danger! I can't stand to eat one more mushroom! Look at me! I can't live off these flowers and junk! Then why don't you go down first? Wait a second, that's not fair! We should let fate decide! Hmm, so be it! We all followed suit, but none of us had steady hands. There was so much eagerness, yet so much fear. Star Mushroom Missile! And just like that, fate was clear. We all tied with stars while Wario lost with the missile. All credit to him, he didn't put up a fight. If I'm not back in an hour, then I'm gone. We saluted him as he left us, then we waited. It felt so wrong to be on the green and to be just sitting there, not going anywhere or doing anything, just waiting. An hour passed before we knew it, but there was no sign of Wario. We kept waiting, letting a whole day pass before we admitted he wasn't coming back. We have to play again. Are you crazy? If Wario didn't survive, then none of us will. Maybe there's no way back. If this is the exit, it could be a one-way trip. Besides, we're too weak to go on. This has to be it. Let's just get on with it. Star Mushroom Missile! Wah! Screw you, scheming brothers! I bet you coordinated that! Don't be ridiculous, Waluigi. Get in the hole! I would if Princess was around. Shut up and get in! You're wasting time! Unfortunately, just like before, hours and hours went by and Waluigi never returned. We worried for our friends, but we selfishly cared more about our stomachs. One of us even more than the other. Hey bro, can I have a bite? Hmm? A bite of what? There's nothing to eat. Well, that's not totally true. You got ten fingers. Couldn't you spare one for your dear old brother? What? Hell no! But I'm so hungry. I don't care! You can't eat me! I'm your brother! You're right. You're my brother. I wouldn't eat you. Just forget I said that. <laughs> Just close your eyes and get some rest. Screw you! You're trying to trick me! Why don't you go jump in that hole? <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> Suddenly, my own brother attacked me, trying to push me down that tube. I fought back with all the strength I had left and managed to kick him off. But then, he stumbled backwards and tripped over the tube and fell straight in. After that, it was just me. I waited for so long. Was it days? Months? Years? I don't know. All I could see were the wrinkles on my skin as it started drooping off of my bones. In isolation, I also lost what was left of my mind. I tried to resist the temptation, 
but it eventually became clear that there was only one course of action before I could second guess myself again. I closed my eyes and jumped in. A few seconds later, I dropped into a hellish place. The ground was scorching. The walls were made of fire. The rivers ran with lava. And scattered around where I stood were the skeletons of my friends and my brother. I didn't even have time to mourn before I heard the roar. I turned around and saw Bowser charging at me. This time on Dragon Ball Z, the greatest warrior to ever grace the Earth, Goku has to embark on a torturous journey in finding out if his not-so-faithful companion Chi-Chi is a thought. Goku then goes on to decipher a deadly love triangle that may put multiple lives in jeopardy in the Dragon Ball Z lair. Join Goku on his quest to finally discover peace once and for all, now on Dragon Ball Z! Oh god, oh god, two o'clock? I can't believe I slept so late! Oh dear, oh dear. Um, sweetie, don't say anything. I need you to stay quiet. My husband's gonna be here any minute now. Oh god, oh god, my face and hair are such a mess. It was totally worth it though. Past one minute of my life. Anything is better than Goku's measly five seconds. Mr. Saiyan isn't so super with his mini Dragon Balls. God, I wish he could grow his little sinsu bean and not just his hair and muscles. Yes, yes, I'm still gonna cook you breakfast. Just shut up and wait here. After you finish, you need to call an Uber and leave, okay? God, I am so tired of these men always thinking they're so entitled to get their Dragon Balls charmed and then expect a five-star gourmet cuisine after. I should just buy a Piccolo helmet toy and do the damn job myself. Oh no! It's him! Keep quiet over there! My husband is calling me! <clears throat> Good morning, dear. It's so great to see you. Good morning. It's two in the afternoon. Did you just wake up? No, I I'm just having a lazy day. Well, you look like hot garbage. If you didn't just wake up, then what were you doing to end up looking like that? Like what? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, right. I'm gonna be there in two minutes. And if Vegeta's there, you and me are gonna have a problem. What? I thought you weren't supposed to be home until the evening. Plans change. Do you have an issue with that, or are you hiding something from me? No, no, of course not. You know I can tell when you're lying. It's in the sound of your voice. I don't know what you're talking about! <clears throat> Nobody's here but me, myself, and my hairy ape downstairs. <sighs> I've been gone for only two days, and you couldn't wait that long, you stupid thought? No, you just had to get in bed with my best friend Vegeta, didn't you? I told him to look after things while I was gone, not to replace me, and certainly not to sleep with my wife. It's not Vegeta. Oh, really? Then who is it? Krillin? I don't sleep with kids. Uh, I mean, I, I only sleep with you. Stop lying to me, Chi-Chi. I know you're cheating on me. It's been obvious for months. All of a sudden, you and Vegeta are always late to everything. You're spending way too much time together to fool me. That's my best friend, or at least I thought he was. Now you're both dirty traitors. I'm not cheating on you, I swear. Save it. Oh no, he's on his way. Mr. Playboy, don't say a word when he gets here. Ah! GG, open this door right now. Oh my god. Oh my god, he's here! What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? GG, I know you're in there! Vegeta, I know you're in there too! Take your McDonald's hairline ass outside and let's handle this like real Saiyans! Goku, calm down, please! Let's just talk about this! So you admit that you're cheating on me? You traitorous tramp! I'm gonna destroy you! No, that's not what I meant! <gasps> Listen, ho! If you don't open this door, I'll destroy you, Vegeta, the house, everything will be gone! Vaporized! Turn to dust! Goku, I'm not gonna open the door while you're being unreasonable! Please, just calm down! Unreasonable? I'll show you unreasonable! Unreasonable power! No! Don't do it! Kame! Goku, stop! Please! Kame! Goku, please! I'll let you smack me with your dragon balls if you simmer down! Ah! Ah! Goku, how could you? And one more to put the nail in the coffin. Ka
Amei! No, no, not again! Please don't Amei. do this! Please! Spare me, Daddy! Huh? Oh, it's Vegeta. What do you want? I thought you were with Chi-Chi. Chi-Chi? What the hell are you talking about? I was calling to see if you wanted to get some sensu beans or maybe pull up on Frieza and beat him to a pope. Hmm. Both sounds good. Awesome. Meet me at Frieza's in ten. We can use his money to pay for lunch. <gasps> I'm sorry, babe. I don't know what got into me. I really thought you were banging Vegeta on the side. Chi-Chi, look at me. I'll make this all up to you later tonight, okay? I'll give you my special beam cannon in the bed. Oh, and by the way, those eggs are burning. Huh? Oh, crap! Tisk tisk. Good old Chi-Chi. Always wasting the groceries I paid for. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Goku. I, I won't do it again. All right. Catch you later, sweetheart. I feel so defeated. Everything is destroyed. What happened here? Did you screw breakfast again? Boo, turn you into breakfast and eat you! Did Majin Buu really turn Chi-Chi into breakfast and eat her? Did Goku and Chi-Chi remain a thing despite the constant infidelity? Find out in the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. I woke up to the ground shaking. At first I thought it was an earthquake, so I took shelter under my bed frame. I called for my parents, but nobody answered. Then, as quickly as it started, the shaking stopped, even though I knew there might be an aftershock. I got up and ran to the front door to see if the neighbors were alright. But when I opened the door, I realized it wasn't an earthquake at all. I wasn't even on earth anymore. I was flying away from it. All the shaking was from the whole house being ripped off its foundation. But by what I wonder, and how, I looked up and saw what must have been a million balloons strapped to the top of the house, lifting it into the sky. With every passing second, the ground was getting farther away. I screamed for help from anybody down on the ground, but it was useless. Nobody could even hear me. And if they could, there was nothing they could do. Suddenly, a huge gust of turbulence rocked the house, nearly throwing me right out the front door. I managed to catch myself at the last second and got a good look at the fall I almost had. I started to feel nauseous, so I stepped back and slammed the door shut, locking it to keep it from flying open no matter how windy it got. Then, there was nothing but the sound of the wind outside, all the way up in the sky. There was no electricity or plumbing, so no lights, no fans, none of the comforts of home. Just a shell of it, full of nothing but darkness. I turned around to go looking for my parents when I saw him standing at the end of the hallway. A mean and scary looking old man who looked familiar for some reason. I had no idea who he was. I only knew that his lifeless stare gave me the creeps. That, and I was trapped in this floating house with him, with no way of calling for help from anybody on the ground. I just hoped I wasn't completely alone with him. Hello? Who... who are you? Why are you in my house? Where are my parents? Hey, c come on, why aren't you saying anything? And why is my house floating away on balloons? No matter what I tried to say, that creepy old man wouldn't talk to me. Then, for no reason at all, charged at me. <laughs> it was actually pretty easy to get out of the way. The old man was slow and clumsy. I ran circles around him to keep him from grabbing me, but I knew I couldn't run forever, so I found a place to hide. While he wasn't looking, I crept into the linen closet in the hallway. From there, I listened. For some reason, this man was searching for me like mad. I could hear him getting more and more enraged because he couldn't find me. Grumbling at first, then shouting, then smashing things all over the house. I hoped he would tire himself out, but even though he was frail, he never gave up. Once the kitchen and the living room were destroyed, he stumbled back out into the hall. I held my breath as I heard his footsteps approaching, about to pass right by the closet. But then, he stopped. My heart pounded and I kept a hand over my mouth to keep quiet. The old creep then turned and looked right through the wooden slats of the door, but I couldn't tell if he saw me or not. It was almost like he was trying to literally sniff me out. I wondered if he could smell my fear, if that would give me away. But thankfully, after an eternal moment, he kept going. I finally breathed a sigh of relief and started to think about my next move, only for the door to swing open as the man barged in and grabbed me. He chucked me down the hall, sending me sliding across the floor. In an instant, he was hovering over me. Don't tell anyone about me or anything I did, you got it? If you do, I promise you'll regret it. And don't ever forget to take your medicine again. Don't be an idiot. 
All you have to do is take one little pill every day. Is that too hard for you, you imbecile? No, 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 it's not. I'll do it. I promise I won't forget again, and I won't tell anyone about you either. Well, that's great. Otherwise, I'll have to string you up by the... Just then, a knock came to the front door. In a split second, all the fury the man had from before faded to the level of a man I might actually want to talk to. That time already? I guess that's my cue. You remember what I said now, or I'll have to come back. And I don't want to have to come back. Got it? Got it. So long then. Wait, where are you going? There's nothing out there. We're floating. I watched from the floor dumbfounded as the man walked to the front door. I tried to warn him, but I knew I wouldn't have an effect on him. I just kept thinking. It's impossible. There's nothing out there. There can't be. I saw it. How could anybody be knocking at the door? But he opened the door and slinked out all the same, closing it behind him. I didn't get a chance to see if anyone was on the other side, but I certainly wasn't going to open that door until they knocked on it again, whoever they were. Maybe it was just the old man messing with me, or maybe it was somebody who would come to help us. I didn't know, but more than anything, I didn't want to be trapped there all alone. I had to go check, even if it was just a trick. I picked myself up off the floor and walked to the door, then opened it to an entirely different world. What was all that noise? It, it was nothing. I was just playing a game. I was worried about you. I thought you were having another episode. I'm sorry. I promise I'll keep it down. I guess the whole time I was just in my bedroom. I know I have a really overactive imagination, but I don't like the word the doctors use for it. Regardless, I still had to look out my window to make sure the house wasn't flying anymore. The only thing I saw was him, my old and creepy next door neighbor, smiling at me through the window, holding a balloon in one hand and snapping his fingers with the other. Like he was trying to tell me something. I don't like taking my medicine, but I'll do it if it keeps me from seeing him up close and personal again. 